want to say. Velema delicata la baya. We bless you, Father. Jesus, precious name. Amen. Father, as we go into your word today, we ask that your word will go into us. In Jesus' name. Out 10 objectives. I'd like you to write down if you can the purpose of this whole series, social capital and lasting relationships, has about 10 objectives. You may want to collapse, you know, two into one, it's up to you, but I have 10 simple things I hope to achieve throughout this month. I've decided to approach this teaching in this sub, I mean, in this style. Because I feel that I need to be a little exhaustive, I need to be a little precise to define both expectations and experience. The first of the um, objective of this teaching of this month is to bring everyone into an understanding of God's purpose for our lives. That's the first for me. To bring as many people who will listen and receive the teaching into an understanding of God's purpose for our lives some people think that our purpose here is to just live get married and you know have children and then walk and buy a car and then maybe die you know but that's not god's purpose for your life everything that god is giving to you is to help you achieve the purpose you must understand that anything that is in your life today is not your purpose of your life it's only supposed to help you now achieve the purpose for your life number two 
is to believe in God's plan and purposes for our lives. Number one is to understand it. Number two is to believe in God's plans and purposes for our lives. Number three is to help us understand that the purpose is work. That the purpose of our lives is work. And that the worth of a man's life is in his work. Understand that the purpose of our lives is work. And that a man's worth, worth, W-O-R-T-H, is his work. In other words, God wants us to achieve significant things through the work he has given to us. The value of anything is only as relevant as the work it can achieve. If I gave you a phone, what the phone can do will determine its worth. There are phones or laptops that sell as much as $2,000. Oh yes, oh yes, there's even a small gadget I was told, a small speaker. I don't know what the name now is. It Lion Ray? It's not Lion Ray. It's, it's a small speaker, like a tune. Eh? Something very funny. It's long like this. If they put it here, it can run a concert. I don't know if musicians or people that know what I'm talking about. They, and one, one is about 1.2 million. If you see the thing, it's not bigger than Kai. This thing is to be a very slim speaker. And you wonder what gives it so much value. Is the work he's doing. Is the work he's doing. If you are doing more work, you'll get more worth. So don't get confused. Your worth is in your work. What work are you doing on this earth? Let me tell you the truth. If you are not well paid, it's because you are not working the strategic work. I want to say that to you. Of course, number four here is that number four um, objective is that there are people and specific persons. There are people and specific persons to help you understand that there are people and specific persons God has designed to help you fulfill your awesome purpose. Your purpose in life is awesome, but there are specific people, there are people generally, and then specific persons God has ordained to help you fulfill that purpose. Then number five is that if you don't choose right, you can... Okay, that if you don't choose right, you may end up replacing your life purpose with trying to fix your right, wrong relationships. That if you don't choose right, you can end up replacing your life purpose with trying to fix your wrong relationships. Did you understand what I'm just trying to say? So if a man is supposed to marry his wife so that he can build a city for God or something, if he marries the wrong wife, he will spend his life purpose trying to fix the relationship instead of marrying her to build. Do you understand what I'm saying? Please, I need you to follow me here as much as is possible, please. Number six. My objective in this number six teaching is to present to you God's capital to your life to fulfilling that purpose. In other words, what is God's asset to you since he is the one that will measure your purpose? You see, your purpose is not just to have children and having children can be a purpose to an end. For example, all that we saw of Mary, the mother of Jesus, was to give back to Jesus. After she gave back to Jesus and trained him up, after a while, boom, she was gone. Why? She had fulfilled her purpose. Life no longer makes meaning without purpose. If you have long life, it is because God is hoping that you can use the length of days to achieve purpose. Don't forget, it is what we do here that will determine what we'll experience there. How you live here will determine what you'll experience there. What we do on earth echoes in eternity. Hear what I'm sharing with you, please. It's true. So don't just think that my life is just my life. It's not your life. For what you are doing here is counting. God is going to give record and rewards to our actions and our inactions. That's important also. It's not just your actions. There are things that you are not doing that can be making you miss a reward. For example, if you didn't buy the last MTN shares, you don't expect to get the returns by April. I just told someone updates now. Your, your information, some people don't even know that there was MTN shares. MTN selling shares. What's shares? Some people don't know. You see, those are the things I want us to come to awareness with because the level you come into to a relationship can determine the kind of experience you have in a relationship. If you're an illiterate trying to marry a brilliant woman, it can have a conflict somewhere. All right, both of you could have been better if both of you are on the same page. Today, I'm praying that any disadvantage in your life, the Lord will help you turn it around in Jesus' name. Number seven, make us value intangible things of life in God over tangible things in life. Make us value intangible, that is, I intangible things of life in God over tangible things that we see in life. Number eight, How the realization of your capital may make you know your worth 
and place value on yourself as you fulfill the purpose of God for your life. How the realization of your capital, how you come to know what your capital in life is. And I will be defining capital very shortly, so just let's flow together like I prayerfully have prepared for this. It will help you know the, the value of your worth and place value on yourself to determine the God, you know, the kind of person you want to spend your lifetime with. In other words, when you know your capital in life, it will help you place value on yourself. For example, let me give you an illustration. If you get to know that every word I say to you is true, and I tell you that you are going to be the governor of Lagos State tomorrow, that's very possible. I don't know your name though, but that's very possible. Do you hear what I just said? <laughs> very possible. That if every word I say to you is true, that you are going to be the governor of Lagos State, and you are not even married, is it not intelligent for you to know that there's worth on my life? So the person I'm going to marry should be able to handle such future aspirations. Am I making some sense? So when we say capital, I'm saying that it is important for us to know our worth, and so we can put premium on that worth and use it to determine the kind of person we marry or the kind of person we do business with. If you know your future that well, it will inform the kind of people you roll around with. It will even inform where you urinate. It will inform the kind of people you give your number. Am I making some sense? So, I want us to be very, I mean, interested in seeing how God is using this capital conversation to help us put premium on ourselves so that we will not just, you know, accept rubbish. Number nine, help you understand, again, the importance of relationships, why they are necessary, why they need to last and why they are necessary. And how to make relationships last. That's number nine. And number ten is how to become a person of intentional influence. How to become a person of intentional influence. I'll be sharing with you five important points or laws to becoming a person of influence in the course of this discussion. So let us get started with today's teaching especially. Today is um, the, is it, what's today's date? 6th of february and i want us to please follow we're going to be having four sundays am i correct it should be four today 6th 13th 20th and 27th yeah so i will be taking them rather today in particular i want to introduce the subject of capital and i'm sure you are wondering what i may be meaning by capital and what is social capital to relationships yes that's the objective and i want us to please notice that we will be having conversations that are not only church-like in this church going forward. I want you to know that the purpose of you being in church is so that you can be the light of the world. So, I, want, I don't want us to, you know, stop at just being good church people. I want us to be very solid people in the public space. May the Lord grant us understanding in Jesus' name. I say, may the Lord grant you understanding in Jesus' name. Now, let's go into the conversation of what is capital. In this service, I'll be looking at about five things number one what is capital number two what kinds of capital do we have number three what is social capital number four why is it important number five how do we get it when we lack it i'll take it again number one what is capital number two what kinds of capital do we have Number three, what is social capital? And number four, why is it important? Number five, how do you get it when you lack it? I'm sure we can capture that. That's five points. Number one, what is capital? Number two, what kinds of capital do we have? Number three, what is social capital? Number four, why is it important? And number five, how do we get it when we lack it? Spirit of the living God, we thank you in Jesus' name. All right, now, capital is the resource and resourcefulness. I'm defining what capital is now. The resource and resourcefulness. Please be patient with me. Don't judge me or preempt what I'm trying to do. Just follow what I'm teaching. Is that okay, please? Can I hear your amen, please? Can I hear your amen? Someone is saying, Pastor, what is capital? Which one is capital? We're going to say fire in Jesus' name. Listen, the fire is coming. Is not missing. But listen to what I have to teach you this morning. It will bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear a better amen please? Give me some juice on this mic if you can. So listen. 
we are asking ourselves a very interesting question. What is capital? And I said capital, for the purpose of this teaching, is the resource and resourcefulness used to... Initiate and sustain an event or a transaction to its desired outcome. Please, let me give you that definition again. Capital is the resource and the resourcefulness. Better, thank you, I like that. Resource and resourcefulness used to initiate and sustain an event or a transaction to its desired outcome. Number two. It can also determine what kind of returns you get on the investment. I believe that's clear. So let's go into the conversation. Number one is to see that God Almighty is an investor. This is a very important statement. You might be thinking that God is good, God is kind, God is everything, but your God is also an investor. All of those things are true, but God is also an investor. See after me say God of the Bible is an intentional God. Please let me preach. Let me feel you this morning. Say God of the Bible. Please don't let us turn this to a revival meeting. Let me feel your pulse. One more time. Say God of the Bible is an intentional God. Everything he makes is intentional. He has a plan. He has a purpose. He will achieve that plan he will achieve that purpose. I want to remind you here, people of God, that the God of the Bible is a very deliberate God. He is not just a careless maker, just makes things. No. And he makes things and people with an intention. I'll tell you stories. Mark chapter 11. Don't go there. Just re referencing down. Jesus was walking and he was approaching a tree. Please listen to what I'm saying. And then he saw that the tree did not have fruit on it. People of God, do you remember what your Jesus did? Do you remember what he did? What did he do, please? He cursed that tree. He did not leave the tree saying, uh -uh, why don't you have fruit now? He is supposed to have fruit by this time of the month. His mango is it. Mm. He cursed it and said, no man will eat from you again. I think that was an extreme measure for fruitlessness. Ah, Jesus, so if he's Peter, I'll say I understand. How can you look at a tree and say, eh, for not having fruit now? If I, in one version, I say that it was not season for it to have tree or fruit. Or. If you read your Bible, don't help God. <laughs> don't help. You know how sometimes you can say, actually, what God means is that, mm, 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 mm. don't help Bible. Bible can defend itself. So don't help. In fact, Bible tells us that if you add to me, I, there's a problem on you. <laughs> if you take from me, there's. So don't help Bible. He told us clearly that it was not time for the figs to bear um, for the figs to bear fruits. And Jesus looked upon him and said, Curse be you. No man will taste from you again. Check your Bible. Don't be me right time. Why am I saying this to us? That there is so much urgency on being fruitful. There is so much urgency on. In fact, in John 15, Jesus was talking there. He said, Look, every tree that does not bear fruit, my father will prune. He will cut it down. And guess what? Throw it inside fire. I want us to please open our minds up to the conversation because it simply means that if you are a tree of righteousness, you ought to produce fruits of righteousness. That's what the Bible calls you. That we are trees of righteousness. The plant is of the Lord that we might rebuild the walls. That's what the Bible says. That you are not just an ordinary person. That you are a person of value. That you did not know there's something there's no value on you. That you are ignorant or people did not regard you. There's something there's no value on you. If I take a hundred dollar bill to some villages, they will use it to wrap a car. Does that mean the hundred dollar bill does not have value? Take it to the streets of Lagos. Choke with it in a bus. With everybody still in the bus, you will not find your money again. Because people that know the value will collect it from you. They will not collect, they will swallow it. They don't mind going to do surgery to remove it back. Guess what? Value is value anywhere it is. And I'm saying that you don't know there's something there's no value on you. You might be hungry and broke as I'm talking, but there's value on you. One of the things God has sent me to do today is to repeat and reemphasize the importance of your life. You are a person of significant value. 
listen to me. Not everybody has five fingers. Some have two. Some have three. Yours is complete. You can move them. There is something in your life that is worth it. Not everybody can look down and sit down straight like you are sitting. There is something about your life that you don't know it does not mean it does not exist. Anybody can call you the name. Somebody can look at that $100 bill and call it that East newspaper. Look at the picture inside though. That does not mean it's a $100 bill. It does not mean. You cannot devalue yourself just because you are ignorant of yourself. Start with first of all putting some value to know that there is value in your life. See after me say there is value in my life. People of God, let's preach like though we are a thousand people here today. Say there's value in my life. I need to say that unequivocally, remind you regardless of what you've been through and reassure you that God did not only place value on your life, he's also monitoring that life. Guess what he sent me this morning? He sent me this morning. <laughs> and I wanted to receive what I'm sharing with you. There is so much intrinsic value on your life. Your life is actually God's capital. Like we said, capital is that resource and resourcefulness that God places upon a thing, upon a product, upon a person. You are God's product. Glory to God. Help me preach this morning. Say to your neighbor, say you are God's product. Say you are God's investment. Preach like though there is life on your inside. Say you are God's investment. Say I am on this earth on a purpose, for a purpose, to achieve a purpose. Say nothing will stop me. Say I will accomplish the plans and the purposes of God for my life. Say I will not be stopped. I will not be hindered. Nothing will limit me. Say I break open in the name of Jesus. Say I'm stronger. Say I'm brighter. I will achieve what God wants me to achieve in the name of Jesus. Say this life, this breath in my nostrils is for nothing. It's not for nothing. Say it's not for nothing. Say it's for something so that I can become someone in a time like this. Shout hallelujah. This is very important. We are defining what capital is. When we say capital, we are saying what is that resource that is available to you to get the things you want to see in your life. When your friends and yourself want to do business, say what capital do you have? When you want to do some business, the business bank will ask you, do you have capital? Capital is that sum of resource or resourcefulness that you can put into a thing to get the desired outcome. That's what we mean by capital. Don't necessarily think about 100,000. That's not, that is financial capital. We are talking about that in types of capital. Capital of life is different from financial capital. Some people can have 100,000, but they lack the idea of what to use it for. Am I correct, sir? Yeah, so capital is not just that I have money. You can have money and be broke. What I mean by that is to say, money is not the only capital of life. Hear me, sir, that you have breath in your nostrils is capital for living. If there's no more breath in your nostrils, there's trouble, sir. It's trouble. So, don't, I want to move your mind from capital being money to being any resource of value that can get you the desired outcome. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Say a big amen here. Yeah. I hope I'm talking to a mature class this morning. Yeah. Guess what? Some ladies stand by the road. They know they have capital. See, I'm looking at me like I see <laughs> Hello. Some ladies will tell you that they do, if you don't have 2012 bands, they will not listen to you. That is some capital. You are looking at like me like you are not trending. See, listen people of God, there is something about your life. Brothers, listen to me. You are very, 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 very strategic in this life. Ah, I wish I can put a mirror in front of you. To remind you that you are a person of value, sir. Hey, rata. See, eh, unfortunately, you grew up in a place where your capital was not developed. Where it was not appreciated. Where there was no investment on you. Either because of the ignorance of those that owned you or your own ignorance of owning yourself. But from today, whatever you have lost, God will catch up for you. Yeah. What am I trying to say? That attribute that can make a man get what he desires is capital. For you to stand up and walk to a fine girl and say, hey, I'd like to marry you. That's a strong capital, sir. Number one, there's boldness in that. And that thing can trip women. Uh, we are coming to that. Capital lines are wrong. We are coming to that. When you have capital, the emotional stamina to approach someone 
and say, I need you in my life. Ah, that's capital, sir. That means you are probably even know where you are going to. You just need the person to follow you for a desired outcome. We are coming to that. So capital is not just money. I want you to take your mind off capital as being money. We have been using it for too long as money. Capital is anything that can help you get something in exchange for what you have. Guess what some people have? Home training. Home training is capital. Some people, honesty is capital. Some people, guess what they have? They are going into business, Mr. Tune. They are doing business with someone. They did not bring any financial money, but they said, just give us your name. Your name. All we just need is put your name on the letterhead. Ah, name is capital, sir. And you know, name is capital. Ecclesiastes 7 1. A good name is better. That people used to use it for just a, a character. Just have a good name. Uh, mm -hmm. Good name is capital, sir. Some people say, What are you bringing to the book? My name. Ha -ha. Put that name in parentheses. You see some women, they are married though. They will still say, inside their name, oh, me. <laughs> so that they don't lose that family capital. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Eh? What am I trying to say to you? There might be capital in your life that you are not utilizing that is keeping you broke. Yes. Yes. And I'm starting with the capital to speak to the fact that most people don't look on themselves as anything of value. They don't even believe that there's something about them. But they got too many zeros in primary school that they believe that it is for life. Zero in primary school does not mean zero in life. Oh. Yes, sir. Don't make a mistake. Oh. That you were carrying last in primary school does not mean you carry last in life. That was just an assessment of children gathered together that all of us were confused. Amen. Break time was what we had in our minds. Break time. I, I can like break time. <laughs> Who likes break time when we yeah. You are remembering. I can I can't wait for break time. All this this why say it goes to school, goes to school over. How does that affect my destiny? Till now, we've discovered that all they wanted to communicate to us was to be able to read and write. Sir, there is something about you today as I speak to you that God is putting value on. That after this service, you will discover you're a new person in Jesus' name. So, what is capital? Capital is our resource. What kinds of capital do we have? Quickly, we have financial capital. The popular one. How much do you have? 20,000. Put it inside business. You know how people start this POS machine business? You put 100,000, you start. You collect 500 naira for every business. Your capital grows 5% that day. You know, and then you start to, you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. So, you multiply. You say, Pastor, are you doing it? I'm not doing it, but I know about a lot of things. So, that 100,000 can multiply at the end of the month to becoming 150,000. That's the same way. 100,000 measure it in value of character. Honesty. That honesty can convert itself to becoming an empty of a company. Uh -huh. What did Joseph use to become prime minister? Capital. Ability to interpret dreams. What ability do you have that can give you what you want? Stop looking for money. That's what God has been trying to say. If money was the most important thing on this earth, when he made us, he would have given us money. Yes. If money was the thing man needs to succeed, when he made us, it would be unfair for him to stand up and leave us alone without giving us cash. But I just told us, look at that side. There's some 200 billion there. Naked man. I can just imagine him stand up. 200 billion. He did not even know the value. God has never liked to discuss money with man. When you discuss it with him, he reacts. That money is not what I put on you. When God made man, he said that he blessed man. The Bible says the nefesh of God's spirit went into man. The life of God. People of God, that life is capital in itself. Because that life comes with intelligence. That life comes with consciousness. It comes with appreciation. So God never made financial capital. It's man that made financial capital. What God gave us as capital is a blessed mind. <laughs> Which many of us, the devil is fighting every day. That's why Jesus said, what can a man give in exchange for his soul? 
Because that is the most important thing of life. A beautiful mind. How many of us have such this morning? Say, I have a beautiful mind. Say, I have a blessed mind. Say, my mind is blessed. Say, my mind is my capital. Even sexually, if I be allowed to speak to an adult class this morning, listen, the capital of sex is not the organ. It's the mind. If you are not happy, your body will be calm. In the I know you don't practice sex, so you just be looking straight. But hear me, for the married, just keep listening. Continue. So, <laughs> if your mind is not happy, you can be seen a naked woman and say, God will punish you. <laughs> Am I making some sense here? Okay. It's not that you are naked that keeps us alive. It's that our body is happy. Hello? That means the mind is the most important part of everything. That means you must not allow anybody or anything fickle with your mind anyhow. That's why the devil wants to get you with pornography. That's why he wants to get you with distracted friends. He wants to get you down with debt. He wants to get you confused with failure. Because with your mind is what God will use to make you succeed. Not with money. Your mind. Philemon verse 14. Without your mind, I can do nothing. God talking to us. That's why I am saying the capital of our success is not money. Money is only an outflow of a blessed mind. Money follows a blessed mind. So you have to guard your heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it will be the flow of your life. You can stand in front of opportunity and blast it off simply because you lost your mind. You stand in front of Potiphar's wife. You have a choice to think this is a smooth one. Smooth operation versus a choice of your destiny. It's a choice, sir. It's a choice that only a qualitative mind can make. So what goes into our minds determines what comes out in a life. Good thinking, I said last week, good living. Bad thinking, bad living. Stinking thinking, stinking living. It's something you can predict. Help me tell anybody, watch what goes inside because it will determine what comes outside. A little child comes and says, Daddy, I'm afraid. My question is, where did you get fear from? Who taught you the vocabulary? Something went inside. He probably taught his auntie, or he saw his auntie, or his uncle. I'm afraid, I'm afraid. And without explaining deeply, the boy got the meaning. Because words are spirits. So capital exists in different forms. You have social capital. You have financial capital. You have spiritual capital. When you tell somebody to go and start church, it's not money they used to start church. Oh. Even fellowship. Are you get what I'm saying here? Yeah? There is an intelligence that used to start. You know some of us here, we're into business. If I tell you to start a small cooking shop now, you know what to do. I, I don't know. You didn't go to any business school, but you know what to do. Am I making some sense? That ability, that knowledge... In itself, might not be money, but can bring money to the table. The problem is most of us are looking for money so much that it looks like it's far away. No, I can tell you from today, money will begin to chase you. Yeah. I said it though with a very simple voice, but I speak prophetically. From today, what you are chasing begins to chase you. Yeah. Capital. Look, someone comes up with a song. A song. What do I do in the morning or not? You know, I, I, I'm sure you'll be surprised if I knew the lyrics. Yeah. And that music is sold at a premium. Sir. Capital. It was no money he put on the table. But that music will never lack money. I get what I'm saying? 
One love, one heart, let let together and feel. Oh. The generation of the man is still benefiting from that song. What will your generation benefit? What will they benefit? Debt. Confusion. I'm asking you, sir. What will they benefit? Fine looks you did not give them. I don't start by. When I never see. You think it's ordinary I dress like this. I came to be radical on you. Fine looks that could have made them marry governor speaking. One day somebody found me. Somebody saw go find one day. They are not finding you. Why am I saying this to us, sir? You still have time to correct history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You still have time. Yes, sir. You still have time. Yes, sir. Your children come, all they know is death, trouble, and confusion. And you think you are living a life? I come to challenge you on behalf of God. Change your ways. Look inside and find the capital on your inside. There's something about you that is bigger than what you are. And I'm saying this at this size of this church because you know we're going to get bigger. Yes, sir. What I'm producing is capital. They are coming. They are coming. Amen. Hear me, sir. It is not about shouting up and down. We must find this treasure that God has put in our inside. As a lady, even good self-esteem can be a capital. You can't say no to anybody. He just asked me, oh, no. He just asked me, he don't share. What happened to you? What? You're in London, say no. He asked me, he loaded. I need my shower. People of God, hear me well, sir. There is something about your life. That brings me to the next point. That social capital may be the major factor to helping you succeed in this life. Even spiritual capital is to help you supply social capital. Hear what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. That's why I'm begging you, don't miss these teachings. Some of us use social, I mean spiritual capital to cover up for social capital. It can't work. You can't come here and be saying, and confuse us. You have low self-esteem. Speaking in tongues will not cover up for low self-esteem. Do you understand what I'm saying? That your essa does not cover up your insecurity. You were supposed to have been taught that social capital from your family. But we have turned it into a spiritual project in church. Yeah. Hear me, sir. What you lack in home training, praying in tongues will not be enough. If you don't deliberately revive that culture, speaking in tongues will not be enough. So this is it. Every man with a mind has the ability to be a billionaire. Your speaking in tongues, if it does not affect your social conduct, will make you a recluse in your society. If you do not have the social capital of tolerance, everything that comes around you, you will sting away. If you don't have the discipline of self-control, every woman you will lay with. Even that decision of self-control is a capital. Because some women carry glory free of charge. The bad thing about those women is that they are not using the glory. Oh. They just want to kill it. Maybe you will collect glory and use it. No. The only is to kill glory on behalf of Satan. 
I'm saying something there for people of God. That there is something about our lives that we need to recover. And I call it social capital. It's deliberate. The Bible says David, David left his son no war to fight. No war. There was no war in David, I mean Solomon's time. Solomon did not fight one battle. Charlie, not one. Some of us are fighting the battle of our grandfather. Till now. Lord, every plague in my father's house. Put your right hand in Jesus' name. Fall down. Collapse. Somersault. Die. <laughs> Great grandfather. You are still fighting that. You will need to deal with that, but that is not an end in itself. It's supposed to bring you to a place where you can be normal. Start to thrive. Start to succeed. Start to feel normal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This month, I beg you, don't miss it. Listen. So there is social capital, financial capital, spiritual capital. All of them are the resource or resourcefulness that God will give you or that you have to be able to produce what you desire in your life. There are things that you lack, so to speak. And I'm saying social capital in my judgment is the most important of them all. Yes, you need spiritual capital to deal with devils. Amen? But that devil is supposed to give you peace so that you can have social capital properly. Huh. Yeah. Your social interaction does not come from prayer and fasting. It comes from your sense of relationships. How do you relate with people? Let's not confuse spiritual objectives. Spiritual objectives have their place, no doubt. And you know that we know spiritual things here. Maro, Maro, go and ask on the mountain top. Mo you by one kimini. Mo lo we are wearing chain and that we are that's how we are. We are carrying the fire of the Holy Ghost. Maro, I say it before God am I. Let's take a prayer walk. I will show you what it means to wear you out. So we are not just talking because we have English. We are speaking because we are educated in the spirit. That spiritual capital is to produce social relevance. That's why Daniel outstood four generations. It's not for you to just be speaking in tongues. It's so that you can bring relevance to your office. You will speak in tongues. There's nothing wrong with that. Go and buy me more money. Push is that the purpose? In your school, what relevance are you bringing to the table? Politics, what are you planning to do? You say, ah, those people used to go to jazz man. You eat communion every Wednesday. Are you less than a jazz man? Jazz man all of you himself is jealous. <laughs> communion every Wednesday. The Bible says that is the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Spiritual capital is not for spirituality. It's to enhance our social capacity. So after all your spirituality, they greet you. Listen, the more spiritual you are, the more relatable you should be. Jesus was the most spiritual. Amen? Amen? Amen. After Jesus, there's no other person. Jesus was sitting with wine by bars. He was related and he was never corrupted. You come on, smell a cigar. Who is purging our conscience here? Oh God. <laughs> your spirituality is to enhance your sociality. Your relevance in your society. If it does not affect it, your spirituality has not made meaning. You are only you. If you notice a sharp contrast, you are using spirituality to cover up a lot of things. So when we pray in tongues, it's to have a strong social conscience. It's to have insight into spiritual strength and resource. That when they ask us questions, like they ask Daniel, that if you don't give me the answer, I will cut off your head. Daniel said, why is the king so hasty? King, relax. I, they come. I, they come. He went from such spiritual source to draw strength and came back and said, king, was this not your dream that you were having carelessly? Don't disturb us again. When next you need help, call me. It was not gra, gra Lord, let the king die. By this time tomorrow, let his head be on his chest. Oh God, 
if you have spiritual capital, you will walk in confidence. Am I making some sense this morning? So we are speaking about social capital. There are different kinds of capital and we are speaking about social. So social capital is the resourcefulness that helps us interact to achieve a desired outcome. The word interact. Because God himself said it is not good that man should be alone. God knows that man alone will be limited. So don't tell me that you can do it all alone. Even God did not. He did not. He wanted to make man. He said, let us make man. Let us. That's his comrade spirit. Comrade, Holy Ghost. Comrade, Jesus. Comrade, Father. Let us. Don't tell me you want to plan it to succeed alone. So don't be confusing these things. And that's why if you're not educated, you would think that this thing we're saying is high falutian. It's not. It's practical. Your Christianity can be real. Or more, we'll be touching ground, amen. You know, so what are you talking about? The spirituality, the stamina of your spirit is not for spirituality. It's to help you stand in front of a politician that is using jazz. And say, well, I know you are coming from somewhere. But where I'm coming from, we don't drink jazz. We eat flesh and blood. Maru. So I'm saying this because that way, some of us that were born to be politicians can have the guts to go there. You now know that, ah, so this thing is not as hard common leg of chicken that they gave the man to eat if he can kill the world i will show you i had a human being the blood of jesus christ himself is that you don't know you don't know communion is capital if you know you will take it every week with understanding pastor pastor the doctor the doctor diagnosed me diagnosed me with some very bad situation oh god it is in the blood they discover that bad situation. Now imagine taking something, blood transfusion in lifetime. It will locate that thing. Say, are you the one disturbing our ogre? And flush it out suddenly. That's the power of spirituality. Don't let us confuse ourselves. Things of the spirit must belong to the spirit. Things of the flesh must belong to the flesh. Jesus talking in John 3. So don't let us mix up spiritual things for carnal things. No, they belong to their portion. Give to Caesar what is Caesar. Give to God what is God. Life and godliness. There's a godly living that we have to live here. Glory to God. I said glory to God. That's why I'm confident that your family will be blessed that you came. That's why I'm confident that the story of your family will change in the name of Jesus. That the story of your family in poverty is cancelled forever. That from today, that the power of the Holy Ghost is turning your story around. Every plague of death in that relationship or that family, I command is converted now in the name of Jesus. I declare you shall make no more laws in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord God in his goodness will enhance your life with capital. The resourcefulness you require and the resources you need to make your life become the desired outcome, receive it now in the name of Jesus. From now, every sickness not making you enjoy the best of your life. I stand as God's servant and I speak to that situation. I call it cursed in the name of Jesus Christ. I judge every wickedness against your life and your destiny. I say from today, God is lifting you up. I say God is lifting you up. I say God is bearing you up. God is helping you out. God is lifting you up. God is bearing you up. God is helping you out. In the name of Jesus. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice that Satan has desired to sift his glory that wants to destroy your testimony? Today I pray by the mercies of the blood of Jesus that today you are recovering all. You are recovering all. You are recovering all. In the name of Jesus. Put your right foot forward if you can wherever you might be. Say after me, say in the name of Jesus. Say it again, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that I'm going forward in life I refuse to be stranded I refuse to be confused I refuse to be overwhelmed I walk in my divine inheritance I move by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I overcome every power of the enemy in the name of Jesus I am healed I am whole I am strengthened in the name of Jesus 
Sometimes say, I have a sound mind. I live a sound life to the praise and the glory of his name in the name of Jesus. Sometimes say, There shall be no loss, there shall be no regret, there shall be no destruction, there shall be no shame. I am blessed, I am helped, I am sanctified. I give God the glory in Jesus name we pray whoever is under the sound of my voice this morning that has been under a plague of disadvantage whatever type I stand upon Jesus Christ the solid rock and I declare right now by the power of the Holy Ghost every oppression is cancelled in the name of Jesus somebody here you have been celebrating anniversary of that problem that problem has had month to month week to week situation with you today I declare it is over in the name of Jesus what you can do by yourself from now multiplies by the power of the Holy Ghost so shall it be if your amen can sound the loudest here receive your testimony shout a better amen. amen let's shout hallelujah three times somebody shout hallelujah secondly shout the louder hallelujah the loudest hallelujah give the lord a round of applause and appreciate god this morning you may be seated in god's presence god bless you praise god he's a good god this month what you lost is recovered this month who you need to know is coming into your life i told you last week last week yeah it was last week how i was looking to get a job somewhere you know i told you that same office come can we reason together i say what this life god doesn't forget god doesn't forget <laughs> ah I don't know who it is that I'm speaking to, but I want to say this over your life. God is putting you to the top. Amen. He's rewarding you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where you were once insulted, God is honoring you back there. Amen. I know you mean well for your life, but it has not been so well for you. But today I pray that everything you have meant for your life, God is bringing to make sense in Jesus. Amen. I declare that God is collapsing time in your favor. Amen. No longer will you be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please, if you don't mind, one more time, give the Lord a round of applause and appreciate God this morning. Take your time, take your seats. God bless you. Let's be seated in God's presence.